Hello and welcome to Spam Traps, a Marketer's Nightmare. This webinar was organized by Fresh Address, the email address experts. I'm Austin Bliss. I'm the president of Fresh Address and also one, one of the co-founders. And if you have any questions during this webinar or afterwards, I'd be happy to answer them. Just you can hit me on my email address right here on the screen. Those of you who don't know Fresh Address, Fresh Address has been around quite a while. We're an email database services company. We were founded back in 1999, and we help marketers clean, protect, and grow their email lists. And you can see a bunch of our clients right there on the screen, and hope that someday we, you can be one of our clients as well. Today we're talking about spam traps, and we need to start at the very beginning. What is a spam trap? Well, spam trap is basically just an email address. It's not just any email address. It's an email address that works. It's deliverable, meaning it doesn't bounce. So it has to actually go somewhere and be received by a recipient. And the email address is reserved exclusively for receiving incoming spam. Uh, the email address goes into a mailbox and then that mailbox is monitored. It's read, those emails are looked at either by humans in the case of a small provider or some sort of automated process. And the bottom line is anything, any, any emails at all sent to a spam trap address are considered spam. And that's really key. You don't want to send your emails to spam trap email addresses. Now, what do spam traps look like? The truth of the matter is they're sort of all over the place. These are three actual spam traps. Don't even bother to write them down. We'll learn later that there's a lot of spam traps out there. But uh, if you just take a look at these. So the first one, PSBL trap at some th somewhere. Okay, that sounds like a, something weird, right? It certainly doesn't sound like an email address of one of your customers. But that second one certainly could be the email address of one of your customers. You wouldn't have known by just looking at it that it was a spam trap, whereas the third looks completely obscure. Who knows what that is? The bottom line is that you can't sort of hand review your list and pull out the spam traps. Spam traps can look like anything. The they all look like email addresses, and they're all deliverable. Other than that, they can look any way they want. Who creates spam traps? Lots of people, honestly, and lots of organizations. To start off with, a lot of internet service providers maintain spam trap networks, and you can imagine why, because they're trying to identify spam and protect their customer base, and they're using spam traps to do that. Of course, there's also a bunch of for-profit companies that are selling spam filtering services, and they run their own spam trap networks, and they use those networks to feed and inform their filtering service. There's nonprofits and volunteer projects, as well as individual anti-spam sort of vigilantes who just, you know, have some time on their hand. They're good at software coding and they build their own little spam trap network, maybe to protect their own network. There are a lot of spam traps out there, and that's why I didn't want you to write down those three earlier on. There's many, 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 many. How many? Well, this is one spam trap provider. They're called Project Honeypot, and I just screenshot their site and at the time I screenshot your, their site, you can see up there, they had 411 million, 411 million unique spam trap email addresses. So I showed you three, right? So they have Project Honeypot alone, 411 million, and that number keeps going up and up and up and up and up. So this isn't a case where someone knows all the trap addresses out there and you can just pull them off your list like that. This isn't a case where it's a static fact. Spam traps, there's always more out there and they might pop on your list at any time. So of course you're probably thinking, how the heck did spam traps get on my list or how are they getting on my list? The number one way is harvesting email addresses or scraping email addresses off a website or off somewhere that you shouldn't be taking them from. Spam traps are sort of seeded out there. Those email addresses are put out there in places that usually humans wouldn't stumble across, but a robot or a computer or a system that is scraping and looking for email addresses might find, and those will end up on your list. Another way that marketers end up with spam traps on their list is through a bad external source. And this is what we at Fresh Address see happen all the time. The marketer and the brand is trying to do everything right. But somewhere in there, they may have bought a list or somewhere in there, they may have made a bad decision and done a really low quality, no opt-in email append 
or maybe they partnered with a sort of unscrupulous list gen company who's said, oh yeah, I'll get you lots of email addresses. Well, behind the scenes, those lists that you're buying or those cheap pens or those lead gen companies, they're probably doing some scraping or inventing some email addresses. And that's how spam traps are ending up on your legitimate marketing list, although you yourself are not doing the harvesting and scraping. Another way that unfortunately we see our clients end up with spam traps on their list are through typos. A number of spam trap providers actually own the domain that looks very similar to an actual domain. So they might own a misspelling of hotmail.com. So your customers, as they're trying to do the right thing and trying to register for, for your newsletter or your discount, if they type too quickly and misspell hotmail, they might actually end up giving you a spam trap unintentionally. And then those spam traps end up on your list. The worst possible way that spam traps on, end up on your list, and I've seen this with a number of our clients and it's really tragic, is by poisoning. Poisoning is when a spam trap is intentionally placed on your list. How's that happening? Well, sometimes it happens because a spammer, a spammer knows, figures out some spam traps and then they're mad. And they want to get back at the spam, spam trap organization. So they start taking those traps and signing them up everywhere. Um, I've also seen it happen where a competitor, a vicious competitor, poisoned one of their one of their competitors' lists. So it's unfortunate, but it definitely could happen. These are some of the ways that spam traps can end up on your list. But the bottom line is you just need to remember that spam traps are not real people. They did not voluntarily sign up for your list. So the more you're focused on getting true voluntary signups and then being sure those people are continuing to engage, the more you're keeping spam traps out of your list and doing the right thing. Now, you don't want spam traps on your list for a big reason. Spam traps make you look like a spammer. So when you deploy to spam traps, you're going to end up in a bad situation. You might end up getting blocked or blacklisted because that email you sent looks now is getting aggregated and you're looking like a bad sender. So they're saying, hmm, who sent that? What's the IP address they sent it from? What's the domain they sent it from? I'm going to block that. Now, of course, the moment they start blocking you, your other emails, the ones that aren't sent to spam traps, are landing in your recipient's junk folder, which is really bad news, right? Because then they're not clicking on your links. They're not buying your products. Worst yet, we, we've seen a bunch of our clients who have such bad spam trap problems that they get a phone call from their ESP and their ESP says, yo, you're too hot to handle. I need you to get off my service. Go find someone else to deploy your list. And that might end up you're down for quite a while. You know, so the bottom line there is having spam traps on your list could really stunt or kill your email marketing efforts for a big chunk of time. You definitely want to do all you can to keep spam traps off your list. But all that said, there is sort of a good side to spam traps. And I, I sort of like this visual because it helps me think of it. When you look at this, you need to be thinking, is this bad news or not? Yes, there is a rotten apple here. But this could be useful because it's telling me something, right? This is an indicator that there's a bigger problem. The bad apple is letting me know there's a problem with my process, right? Something is happening upstream in the picking and the sorting and the cleaning of the apples that's allowing bad apples to get in and that's the key and that's why this webinar was entitled as it was with a question mark because i think there's an edge there's a side to spam traps where instead of being a nightmare for marketers they're actually useful and spam traps are an indicator and can be helpful to you as a marketer spam traps for example can help you id and stomp out poor acquisition practices that you may have or poor sources of data that you have. They can help you assess the quality of a list that's coming in. Maybe you're evaluating a new pro provider who supposedly does great lead gen, or you're trying to evaluate a list that you're going to rent. Obviously, the presence of spam traps on it is a sign you want nothing to do with that, right? Spam traps can also help you value an acquisition you might be trying to make. Uh, you're thinking of partnering with another company, buying another company. Well, if you can see if they have spam traps on your list, that gives you a good sense of their acquisition practices over time and whether you really want to get in bed with them and partner up with them. So th there's a whole side to spam traps where they really aren't evil at all. They're an indicator of a problem and they can be leveraged. And I've 
I've worked with a bunch of marketers who are like, oh, God, spam traps are such a nightmare. And I understand. But I think there's a whole other side to it. And that's the point of this conversation is 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 sort of, you know, making lemonade out of lemons, I guess, and really saying, hey, what is the value in a spam trap? What's it telling me and what can I do about it? So that, that said, maybe you have spam traps on your list and you're like, OK, I, I, but they're bad. I got to get them out. What should I be doing? Well. Since you can't really hand review them, you've got to partner with an expert on this to help you identify where the traps are on your list. And there are experts, including Fresh Adjust, that can help you do that. And then you can start finding the patterns. Where are those addresses coming from? And go upstream. Because those spam traps, they're just an indicator. They're an indicator you want to figure out what the real problem is and solve the real problem. If you just pull out those 10 spam traps you found, you're not solving your problem and you're gonna have more and more problems over time. So go upstream, figure out what's happening. Do you have, did you do a bad a bad list rental or a bad append or a bad, a bad you know, data acquisition? Maybe you bought a list somewhere, maybe your intern did something or your predecessor did something. Find that data and get rid of it. And then set yourself up for future success. Because we know some spam traps are typos, Make sure you have good typo correction at your point of email collection. Anywhere where one of your customers can enter an email address or anywhere an email address is getting collected, be sure you have software that's scrutinizing to make sure those email addresses don't have typos. And that's exactly what Fresh Address can help you with. You also want to continue routinely scanning your list for spam traps to be sure that there's none popping up because as spam traps change over time and email addresses might evolve from simply a bad email address that might get evolved to a spam trap. You got to continue routinely scanning your list. And then you want to be sure that any new data come in, come in is absolutely opt-in and has absolutely been volunteered and none of it is being scraped. And this can work for you. Just to give you a quick success story, Fresh Address had partnered with AAA Ohio. They leveraged our Fresh Address hygiene services, primarily our safe to send service. Uh, and in that working with us, we detected over 2000 spam trap addresses that they had on their list, helped them tighten their collection practices as well as go upstream and clean up those bad data sources. The corrections alone, simply from the typos that they had been captured that were bad email addresses, generated over $60,000 in added value, and the service overall boosted their deliverability to nearly 100%. So th there are solutions to this. Spam traps are an indicator of a problem. The problem can be solved. You can get through this, and you can come out ahead. So thank you for attending. Uh, as I mentioned before, my name is Austin Bliss. There's my email address right there. And I'd love to have more conversations with you. If you want to learn more about how Fresh Address can help you with your email marketing challenges, check out our website, visit our blog, subscribe to our monthly newsletter, follow us on Twitter, and keep watching webinars like this one, and you'll learn lots of great stuff. Thank you.